Lego. Lego. What's going on YouTube? Uh, like I said in my last video, I'm gonna be making new. I'm gonna be making my new videos about my motorcycle uh, mostly. Kind of giving y'all some little information on that. So here in this first video, pretty much, I'm gonna pretty much give my perspective on getting your first bike because I'm fresh off of the process, and you don't really find so many videos on YouTube with new riders giving their advice. A lot of them, a lot of the videos I found were more seasoned riders that have already been riding for like a year. But I figure it's always nice to have somebody that's fresh out the process to give you advice on doing it. Okay, so you always have the question of what's the best beginner or starter bike? The debate that uh, will never ever come to the end. Should I get a 250? Should I get a 600? Whatever you crazy, should I get a liter? Even though I think uh, that's a little bit overdoing it. But um, this here, this is what I'm going to tell you is the very best beginner starter bike ever in the history of bikes ever made. Alright, now I'm just playing. I don't be like that, but uh, it's all up to you. This video is going to pretty much kind of cover what I think is the best uh, beginner bike, which is this one here. My CBR F4i. This is a 600cc bike. This is actually an O2 model. So uh, about 11 years old now, but it still runs smooth, really low miles for being, uh, for being um, an older model bike, honestly. Uh, so I'm going to just point out some things, and I'm also cover kind of more in-depth of what I kind of think of the bike after I get finished pointing out a few things here. But um, I only paid three grand for it. Um, if you look at just the aftermarket parts, the tailpipe, the steering damper does have shorty le levers on it <clears throat> you have the carbon fiber tire cover right there uh, pretty much this just those things in general of course the pipe especially uh, that's probably somewhere approaching like the 750 to if not a thousand dollar price range on just different parts on the bike so if you were to look at it like that I mean I'll only play about two grand for the bike itself and then another grand for the actual uh, aftermarket parts on it um, so yeah that's pretty much about it of course it's a beautiful looking bike very similar to the 600 double R but still different in its own way so I'm gonna kind of go into depth as far as different things to look at when getting your first bike and why I think that this here is the one of the best if not the best beginner bike here and uh, as you can see Honda right there so that is what we're gonna be talking about here today yeah we did a few points first off uh, insurance price and buying tips and also the price of the actual bike itself and how much you probably want to spend with getting a first bike um, next off some different issues that I actually encountered when looking into my first bike uh, first one being the size and weight factor Second one being the comfort of the ride and comfort of the bike. Third being the power situation. It's always the question 250 or, uh, or 600 when getting your first bike. It's always the question. Next off, longevity, meaning how long you actually plan on keeping your first bike. And last, just how you feel in your physical ability here. So I'm starting off with the price. Uh, as you already know, when getting your first bike, you probably are, most people say, you're going to probably uh, drop it at least once or twice, probably. Um, not necessarily, I would say. It all depends on just how you take care of your stuff and how careless you are. If you don't put the kickstand down, you just get off the bike and let it go, hey, that's on you. If you come out of the corner too hot and whatever, trying to be uh, Mr. Top Dog, Speed, Racer, Motorcycle Dude, and it slide out from under you, hey, that's on you. But... In the end, with getting your first bike, it's kind of, to me, common sense. You don't want to spend too much for it. Because first off, you don't know if really you even want to ride a bike, probably. Because it's just something you might have seen somebody with. You thought it was fun, so you wanted to get one. So you don't want to invest in something you're, only, you're kind of unsure about. Um, second off, some people prefer, prefer to finance uh, vehicles. Me, I actually bought my first bike cash. 
And the, ring, the reason being is because that affects your insurance costs. If you buy the bike from a dealership, they want you to leave out the dealership. Or if you buy it from a dealership and actually finance it, they want you to have full coverage insurance, which can be very expensive depending on your age and different stuff like that. Um, next off, <clears throat> if you actually finance it, you're of course paying more in the long run. So why not just pay for it cash, find a bike that's in your price range, or find a point that you don't mind actually spending for a first bike and then going from there. So me, my price for my bike was three grand. I was actually trying to save up fifty five hundred for a six hundred double R, a Honda six hundred double R. But I found out about the F4I, which is what I got, that they actually don't make any longer. And that's pretty much is, was the predecessor to the six hundred double R. So you're pretty much getting the same thing, but at a lot lower cost. The next off, uh, insurance costs. The insurance costs between a Ninja two hundred, I mean a Ninja two fifty, and a six hundred CC Honda at least was only about a hundred dollars over the course of a year. I was quoted five or I was quoted four hundred fifty dollars a year for a Ninja three hundred. And then I was quoted $550 a year for my F4i, which is what I have right now, a 600 cc bike. So the insurance is really not too big of a difference <clears throat> uh, in the particular bike that I'm, I'm going to say probably is one of the best beginner bikes. And that's the one that I have. And then third, buy used. Because like I said, it's your first bike. You might drop it or whatever the case might be. If it's brand new, you probably get a lot more mad or disappointed that you dropped it than if it was just a used one. And of course, when you buy used as well, you'll find it priced for less. And if you buy used from an individual, then you'll get it for even lesser. And just FYI, when you do that, make sure when you go and look at it that you have somebody with you that knows about bikes or have them to meet you at a neutral location and get the bike actually checked out. That's about $65 to $85 for like a one hour inspection. They check the brakes hoses, lights, pretty much kind of all the basic on the bike and it's up to you of course to kind of ride it and get the feel for it and make sure that the gears and stuff are shifting right and everything like that. So bring an experienced rider with you or be confident enough in yourself to actually take the bike out for a short spin and kind of test the gears and make sure everything is working correctly. Um, next off the big issue is the size and weight of the bike. Me, I'm 6'1", about 210, so I didn't want to get a bike that was really too heavy. I sat on in the 300. That bike weighs 380 pounds. I was able to lean it from side to side, have no problems with it, didn't feel heavy or anything. Then I went and sat on a Ninja 650, which was another, com uh, I guess you can say, competitor in me buying a first bike. And that one just felt really, really heavy. I actually went and looked up the actual size of it, and it actually weighs 470 pounds, which of course is almost 100 pounds more than the Ninja 300. And then, of course, the 600cc bikes, the CBR 600RR, weighs just like about 410, 415, which is only 30 pounds more than an inch 300. So that was kind of the sweet spot for me when it came to my size and how the weight of the bike kind of, kind of fit in there. Uh, the, people do have an inch 650 and get it as your first bike. I don't knock it, <clears throat> but me personally just felt like if I was going slow, and the weight on the bike was actually centered so high up felt like, I don't know, I just felt like as a new rider, I might have a, a lot more of a chance of like leaning too much to the left or to the right and the bike falling over or whatever the case might be. Because like I said, you probably have a probably have better chance of dropping your bike going at slow speeds and going at fast speeds. So that's how it is. Um, next thing is comfort. Um, all the smaller bikes, all the 250 bikes, you have more of an upright riding position. When you go, because those are just regular sport bikes. When you go to a super sport, the tank is a lot more stretched out, handlebars are a lot lower. So in the end, you go from riding like this to riding like this. <clears throat> this is not comfortable riding for extended amounts of times. Uh, I've heard of a few riders that had 600 cc, like Suzuki, Jixxers, whatever, and they have that for some times, and they do have smaller bikes as well that they ride more for like when they're commuting and stuff like that where you don't want to be slumped over the whole time. So it's kind of a trade-off. Got to kind of see what you like, what you don't like. And it's more of just a waiting game, kind of trying to see when you start actually riding, how does it feel to you being slumped over or do you prefer to be straight up? But the best thing about the bike that I'm recommending, the F4I, which is what I have, is that I guess you can say a Ninja 250 
you're pretty much hitting a 90 degree angle on that. On that. For a CBR 600RR or any of the other newer 600cc bikes, you're probably sitting in closer to about a 60 degree angle, I guess you can say. Just, I'm just throwing some numbers out, probably about a 60 degree angle on that. On the bike I have, it's right there in that sweet spot, like 75 degrees. So you're kind of still upright, but you're not too far over, and it's like that sweet spot in the middle. That's the best way to describe it. All right, so like I was saying, uh, the biggest thing as far as comfort-wise, what I was talking about is this here. You see how the tank, this is got like the tank right here, of course. If you were to sit the bike straight up, of course I can't do it now, but if you sit the bike straight up, this is pretty much even with the handlebars. If not, actually the handlebars actually maybe even be a little bit higher. But when it comes to comfort, that makes a huge difference because you're not actually leaning over the tank. The tank is more of just kind of like a little holding area kind of for your body to kind of shift against, but you're not necessarily leaning over it like some of the newer series 600cc bikes. So that's kind of what I was talking about when I'm saying as far as comfort wise. So we'll get back to the actual discussion about everything here. Um, next thing is the power. I live in Dallas, Texas. Freeways is crazy. Simple as that. Streets is crazy. If you're in a smaller city that may not have too much traffic, hey, you might be able to do a 250 or 300, be the fastest thing on the road. Here in Dallas, people be moving. Everybody is zoom, zoom, zoom on the freeway. Even on the streets, I had a minivan try to race me the other day. I'm like, what you doing, dude? I'm going like 55 and like a 45, so I'm going a little bit over the speed limit. But this dude in the minivan, like, he's like straight going like 65 miles per hour. I'm like, dude, you're in a minivan with like two kids. What are you doing? <laughs> but it was kind of funny, like, I didn't really think much of it. I actually slowed down and let him just go ahead about his business. But I'm like, come on now, bruh. But anyways. So, like with me, I want to be able to ride my bike on the freeway and the streets and everything like that. So when it came to power, I wanted the power of a 600. But the Ninja 300, which is the other bike that was in condition to get to for my first bike, I heard from a lot of reviews that it does have enough power to handle the freeway at, at pretty, pretty, pretty nice speeds and stuff. Of course, you can't be going 80 on the freeway and then pop a wheelie on the Ninja 300. It doesn't, it doesn't have the power for that, but it'll get you from point A to point B, no problem. The Ninja 600, the more power comes in handy because as a rider, you quickly find out that that extra bit of speed, uh, an extra bit of power. When you get stuck in a situation, you want to be able to get out of the situation before anything starts happening. If you're on a 250 or a 300, I'm not saying that you wouldn't be able to get out of the situation, but it wouldn't be as seamless. So that was me, that was the way I looked at it as far as wanting more of a 600cc bike, even though the 300, of course, is more of a, as you would say, your typical starter or beginner bike, what everybody's saying. Um, next thing is longevity, uh, how long you're going to actually keep the bike. In my case, with having an issue as far as pricing it and financing it and stuff like that, I didn't want to have to go through the same process come six months from now, having to trade it in or try to get something bigger or whatever, something that, that's more fits to my riding skills at that time. <clears throat> so I wanted to get a 600 for that reason because it's something that actually keep for an extended amount of time, like a year, year and a half, and you'll still be happy with it. Whereas with a 250 or 300, most people, most reviews I've seen, people wanted to trade them in within about six months. Some people even earlier than that. Not saying that it's not a good bike, but when you start riding with your buddies and everybody got a 600 and everybody's going, zoom, 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 and you're on the 300 like, kind of like trying to go, but you can't keep up. I'm not saying that you should be trying to keep up to begin with. But it kind of makes you think, like, man, I should have probably got a 600. So 600 is kind of the best of both worlds. You get, of course, the size and weight kind of a smaller bike, but with the power of a bigger bike. That's why I like to look at a 600cc bike. So that's why I say 600 is probably perfect. Um, I heard a lot about the Hondas. You got to see what's the best for you. But the Hondas is one of the best 600cc bikes for a beginner. The reason being is because on the low end, like when you first start uh, actually riding, it's no reason why you should be getting your bike into like 12,000, 13, 14,000 RPMs, really, because you're, you're new on the bike. You're not trying to kill yourself on there. So on the low end, a lot of the Honda bikes, like the 600RR, the F4I that I have, they're, they're very smooth and consistent on the lower RPMs. Whereas on like the Yamaha, the R6, 
or the Suzuki Jixers or anything like that, it's a lot more abrupt because those bikes really, from everything I hear about them at least, they're really made for the track. But like I was saying with the Honda bike, they're really, they're kind of a little bit more towards the street side of things than, than being a straight track bike. So the Honda is a lot more smooth, like when I'm actually riding traffic and stuff or whatever, it's not like I'm like come off, come on, come on the a little bit of my bike like jumps. It kind of just eases into it. But when I do want to for real get it up there and give it a lot of throttle, then trust me, the 600, uh, like the F4 or the 600 R, it for sure will give you more than enough power than you than you need as a new rider for sure. But it's not going to be like like the Yamahas and the Jixers. They're wheelie machines. Yes, you can do a wheelie on the F4i on a 600RR. But it doesn't give you as much of that lower end torque. At least from what I hear. And I really think it's tr the truth. Because most videos I see, people usually have the Jixers doing tricks and stuff. Or the R6 doing tricks. Whereas the Honda Riders are more kind of chill and relaxing. Like, just from what I've seen personally. You tell about, of course, you can drop in the comment and tell about your experience as well and kind of see if it matches up there. But um, the last thing here is how you feel on the bike and your physical ability. Uh, first thing I'm going to say is with being a new rider first time, definitely take a motorcycle safety class. For one reason, you'll get a discount on the insurance. Second reason, you'll feel a lot more comfortable when you do get the bike yourself. Because you pretty much know you've covered everything that you have to cover as far as riding a bike. And you, of course, can get some good riding experience and time under your belt before you got to step onto the road. Learning on the road, no bueno. I would not recommend it for anybody. Uh, not at all. Learning from a buddy, yeah, you can do that. But are they going to pretty much cover everything you have, to, you, you have to encounter when you get on the road? Probably not, but if you go to the one of the motorcycle safety courses, they for sure, it's like 18 different lessons that you cover over a two-day period. So they literally touch on everything a little bit to get you a solid foundation before you build a house on top of it, if you understand what I'm saying. So take the course, uh, see how you actually feel riding a motorcycle. You might even get in the course and be like, man, I don't even want to do this anymore. Like, I don't like riding motorcycles. I'm going to finish out the course. And I'm going to just forget about it. I've heard somebody actually doing that. But me personally, when I got on the first time, I loved it. And I highly doubt that I will ever, that it will ever be a time where I probably don't have a motorcycle now, honestly. At least, at least how I feel right now with me first getting it. But um, you, of course, come out of the class. Determine what you felt was your strong suits, what was your weak suits. And then kind of match that up to the vehicle you were looking at getting or the bike you were looking at getting. And then take into account your physical ability itself when on that bike when you do when you do get it or if you feel comfortable enough to get it and kind of go from there. Because I say first, determine how you feel. Let that decide on what kind of bike you get, whether it be a 250 or 300 or even going to 600. Let that kind of be determined on how you feel. Uh, not in the sense of just how you feel as in, man, I got to have the baddest bike on the streets, but more of just, like, do you feel comfortable on a motorcycle at all, or do you just want to start out slow? That's what I mean when that's how, how you feel. But get the bike you want, and then practice. Go to an empty parking lot, late at night, whatever, during the daytime when everybody's at work, go to an empty parking lot, or ride around your neighborhood, or your, com or your, neighborhood or your uh, apartment complex, or whatever, and then get your physical abilities up as far as Shifting with the clutch or pulling the clutch in, letting it out slowly because that's not a natural reaction at all to have your left hand going like this constantly. It's really not a natural reaction. I had to learn that gradually. Of course, in a car, you don't, you don't do that at all. So it's still a big difference even if you ride a stick before. But like go to the parking lot, make sure your physical abilities and you just riding the bike matches with your confidence and how you feel as far as comfort on the bike. And then branch out, go from your neighborhood to go from your neighborhood to the surrounding neighborhoods, go from the surrounding neighborhoods to the actual kind of main roads, go from the main roads to access roads, into the highway, and so on. And so you get more comfortable. The sky's falling, the wind is calling, stand um, for something or die that's kind in of the morning. Tidbits, Section tidbits on getting I'll your go. first bike. Uh, hope this helps somebody out.
almost forgot. Everybody always wanted to know in the video, how does the bike sound? That's the most important part. <coughs> Seems like everybody. I can't tell you how many videos I've seen on YouTube with just bike sounds. But anyways, I love the sound of my bike. It's a very low tone. It's just idling right now. So I'm going to go ahead and rev it up. Let me shift this on the ground because I don't want it to fall off or anything. But I'm going to go ahead and rev it up real quick. Let y'all hear it. Yeah, real low grumbly. Let's see, it's just island here like a little better. So definitely some power behind it, but that's it. That's the last thing y'all get from me. Shout.